Hey there, tall and strong. Up for a little roll in the hay? Not today, Ramon. I'm not in the mood for your games. What? You must be in the wrong place, babe. The Miss Revelon contest is over there. Me? I'm Ramon. <laughs> I may not be a genie, but rub me right and I'll make your dreams come true. Kamusta everyone, and this is the How to Play series, this time featuring Divinity Original Sin. If you haven't heard of Divinity Original Sin, then chances are you're lying. The game was released back in June 30, 2014 and was a complete success. The game received highly positive reviews and your gamer even described it as hands down one of the best classic style RPG in years and thus was recommended to RPG fans. Other praises include and I'm sure you might be thinking, is it good? Is it great? Is it really the best RPG in years? Yeah, sure, it's okay. And so, to help you guys, and for those who are planning to try this game for yourself, I made this video, the rules, the guidelines, or simply, the do's and don'ts. This is... Again, for those who don't know, Divinity Original Sin is a fantasy role-playing video game developed and published by Larian Studios. The game was partially funded through Kickstarter and is a prequel to Divine Divinity. You know, that game that everyone thought had a stupid name but loved the game either way because it's basically like if Diablo and Skyrim made love and had a kid. Yeah, that game. But nobody really cares about any of that. What you do care about is a beginner's guide video on Divinity Original Sin. And I'm just gonna put it out there that I played the game on the Enhanced Edition, so... If you're playing the original one, these tips and tricks may not work for you. Second is I played the game on the Tactician difficulty. Meaning, it's a good idea to take these tips and tricks with a grain of salt. I'll be tackling more on the mechanics and numbers concerning the game along with some basic information on how the game works. I decided to do this instead of giving out information on how to play the game as the in-game tutorial already does a really good job and teaching you this. Anyways, let's get started. If you have played a lot of old school style RPGs, then basically you already have a general idea on what you're in for. But just in case that you don't, it's mostly a tactical RPG with lots of RNG, which means a lot of things. 1. The game itself relies on numbers and percentages. That's right, math. This game involves math. Well, not really that much, but still, math. 2. The game will not hold your hand while playing. Right after the scripted tutorial, the game will, for the most part, will just toss you into the world with nothing but... Nothing, really. They're just questions. Lots and lots of questions. 3. The game may require you to replay the first half of the game if you mess up your character. Yeah, th this happened to me a lot, so... Yeah, th th I don't want... Yeah. And number 4. It requires actual thinking to play. Something I'm not really too good at, but... It's a, it's a fun game. I've been tainted. Careful now. That's a trap. The game's structure is deep and complex, and playing it blindly in your first playthrough will be both rewarding and really stress-inducing. Still fun though. Also, this is a manless game. It uses an action point system to move, attack, and use skills. Everything you do in combat, moving, casting, attacking, costs you action points. It's kind of like a hybrid of Dragon Age Origins and XCOM 2's gameplay mixed into one, which is really fun. Hey, that rhyme. The max level you'll be able to achieve towards the end of the game is 21, and at that point you'll have access to 15 attribute points, 52 ability points, and 7 talent points. All of this defines your character and at the same time affects your playthrough from start to finish. What this means is you'll basically have a general idea on how to play the entirety of the game just by simply knowing what all of these do. And yeah, that's it. It's kinda that simple. Each attribute starts at 5, which you can keep on upgrading up to 15, with 15 being the soft cap. Now you can't get past 15 with attribute points alone, but equipment and talents will allow you to boost an attribute past that point. There are 6 attributes, 3 of which affect specific classes, and 3 that affects every other aspect of the game. Here's a quick explanation of what each attribute does. Strength lets you carry more items in your inventory without being slowed down. Take note that there's no max limit on how many items your character can hold, but there's a limit on how many items your character can hold until it becomes a hassle. It also affects your man at arm skills and damage done by swords, spears, axes, and maces. Rangers and rogues benefit the most from dexterity. This attribute is also particularly important for protection classes as it increases your defenses per point. But then again, this is mostly used for rangers and rogues as it affects your expert marksman skills and scoundrel skills. Along 
with damage done by daggers, rapiers, bows, and crossbows. Intelligence is the main attribute for mages. Every school of magic benefits from and uses this attribute. High intelligence is also required to learn and use spells, and it also reduces the point cost of spells following a damage boost. So if you're gonna play as a mage, level up your intelligence. Constitution determines the maximum HP your character can have, good for tanks and melee fighters. What's important here, however, is the maximum amount of action points you get during combat. More constitution, more action points, more action points, more stuff you can do before you have to end your turn. Speed affects initiative at the start of every battle. It's also responsible for your movement speed and the number of action points received during combat. And yeah, that's it. Now, perception does a lot of multiple things at once. Don't get fooled though as it's not as helpful as you think it is. There are only a few occasions where high perception is required and besides increasing the starting AP amount, it also increases the chance of dealing a critical hit and the chance of hit from a distance, as well as initiative. The most useful quality to this attribute, however, is the ability to uncover traps, which are very plenty and dangerous in Divinity Original Sin. This also includes finding switches, treasures, and secret passages. Okay, now here's a quick recap of of everything I just said. Next is abilities. At level 21, you'll have access to 52 ability points to spend. Take note that each level of ability costs its level in ability points. What this means is acquiring level 1 will cost you 1 ability point and upgrading to level 2 will cost you 2 ability points and so on and so forth. Now abilities are divided into 6 categories. Weapons, defenses, skills, personality, craftsmen, cra craft craftsmanship why are we still here just to suffer and nasty deeds here are the list of abilities for each category put on your seat belts because this is gonna be a lot the great thing about weapons is that you don't really need to invest a single point on any of the weapon abilities to use a weapon much like skyrim you can use any sort of weapon in any character but of course if you want to be effective with a specific weapon you will have to put some points into it otherwise you're not gonna do well with it here's a list of weapon abilities and what they do if you have a ranger in your party, using either a bow or a crossbow is completely up to you. It's best that you focus on one however, as putting points in both will just be a waste of points. Using crossbows instead of bows will result in a slight movement speed penalty, which sucks, but it also gives you more critical damage and more critical chance, which is really great whenever it happens. Dual wielding does not stack with single-handed. If you want to invest in single-handed, you must use a single-handed weapon and a shield. Single-handed builds mostly benefit from the shields they hold, so only go single-handed if you're planning on building an ultimate tank. Dual wielding, however, of course uses both hands to wield two weapons. Thus, dual wielding. Having two weapons does not particularly have any negative effects aside from the extra action points needed to attack, but that can easily be fixed if you keep on investing points into it. Two-handed offers both critical chance and critical damage boosts, perfect for your main physical damage dealer. Two-handed warriors also dishes out the most damage in all the three melee styles and is most effective when using Flurry, one of the most powerful man-at-arm skills in the game. Wands are weapons for mages, aside from the usual staff. Every wand has a stored spell inside it which you can use up to 3-4 to four times and are really great if you still don't have that specific spell. Honestly though, I don't really advise putting points into it as using wands to attack are really underwhelming for mages. Personally, you might as well spend it on somewhere else. Now, Tenebrium is a bit complicated so I'll just leave a detailed explanation on what it does in the description below. But here's my personal take on it. Do not bother putting points into it since there are only a couple of instances that this could actually help you in the entirety of the game. Using a Tenebrium based weapon is actually even punishing for the player towards the end of the game, so no, don't 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 put points into it. There are 4 abilities you can level up to boost up your defenses. While most of them involves managing your equipment, some of the key defenses rely on these 4 abilities. Armor Specialist is only useful if you're planning on using heavy armor. Although it's a good thing to keep in mind that heavy armor are mostly found during the third quarter of the game, so... 
Yeah. Bodybuilding is one of the most useful skills in the game, even more so on harder difficulties. I highly suggest that you keep this at least level 1 or 2 on your mages and rangers, and 3 and 4 on your melee fighters. Just like armor specialist, shield specialist is only useful if you're planning on using a shield. Each point will give you a 5% blocking boost, which would help a lot for your shielded tank. Now, willpower works the same way as bodybuilding, with some minor differences in a few different conditions. This skill is essential in all difficulties. The harder the difficulty, the earlier it is you're gonna be needing willpower. I advise people to wear gear that makes you immune to set status effects. If not, boost up your willpower to at least level 3. Skills are categorized by tiers, and every level of skill ability unlocks how many skills you can learn from each tier. There are two parts in learning a skill. One, before you can access a skill, you need to invest an ability point in its governing ability. And number two is you learn a skill by reading its skill book. Those books can be purchased from merchants or found in loot. Five of the skill lines are based on intelligence, which revolves around mages and hybrid builds. And the other three are based on strength and dexterity that deals more or less physical damage. Now, I would like to remind you guys that all the skills here are really useful full depending on how you use them. The most effective builds are hybrids, so don't be afraid to branch out onto different skills in one character. The one rule I can give you, however, is that you only focus in one primary attribute. Splitting too much points in this area may result in your character to become lackluster in combat, which may result in you just better off starting from scratch. Now the thing about personality is that you don't have one. <laughs> They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it. Personality involves your character's interaction towards the world, whether it be NPCs or objects. Again, let's go through this one by one. Now, I don't think I have to explain this one. This in itself is pretty self-explanatory. Now, again, this may be a bit too obvious, but only invest in bartering in only one of your party members since... I don't see why you need more than one person to buy and sell stuff. Charisma is mostly used for minigames to resolve arguments which are displayed via rock paper scissors game. This could be a good source of experience. While the interactions are all fun and great, most arguments can be won over by reloading a quick save and redoing all the arguments until you get the result you want. So this kind of makes it totally useless. This ability does a lot of things and it's actually worth investing points into. The only downside is it only affects your teammates and not the character you've invested points into. So of course, just level it up on one party member. Now this one is useless. At most, craftsmanship is, oh. It's required to complete certain quests and acquire items that boost up your combat ability. This, this, and this are also made via crafting. It's obvious to say that crafting is somewhat essential in one's playthrough. So, you know, take note of this. Blacksmithing is again pretty self-explanatory, you're basically only gonna use this to repair and enhance weapons and armor. Crafting is useful for gold production and as well as, you know, crafting stuff. It's a good idea to invest in crafting for only one of your party members, preferably not one of your main characters. More on that later. Lore Master allows you to identify items yourself as opposed to spending money to ask a merchant to identify said item for you. Most of the loot you get from the world will be unidentified by default. This will prevent you from using the gear until you find a way to identify said gear. So either you level this up or you find money to let someone else do it for you. Telekinesis is fun but useless in most situations. If you are gonna need it, keep an item with telekinesis at the ready and that's all the telekinesis you're ever gonna need. Wait, isn't telekinesis hard to pronounce? How is that easier than craftsmanship? Cra craft they ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. Everything here is absolutely useless halfway into the game, so don't even bother. Now that I think about it, there's a lot of useless abilities in this game. Hmm. Lockpicking is useless most of the time because every lock chest or door you can encounter in the game can easily be opened if you hit it hard enough with your sword, or bow, or spell, or anything that does damage. Pickpocketing is again fun, but again not really that useful. Get this if you really really want to roleplay as a thief, just don't blame if it doesn't really help you near the end of the game. Sneaking is actually perfect for rogues as they need to outmaneuver enemies and or obstacles. Not so much for everything else. At level 21, you'll have access to 7 talent points. Talents are basically passive abilities that changes your character until the rest of the game. There are 50 talents in total, two of which can be selected at character creation. There are a few outstanding talents, but most of them pretty much suck. So instead of listing out every single talent in the video, I'll just leave my personal favorites right here. Talents are what makes your character unique and different from your other characters. Take some time to think about what sort of talent you're gonna give them, cause you're either gonna make them the god of all things holy, or just shit. 
Traits are more or less the personality of your two main characters. Gain through conversations, these bonuses are applied when one side of the trait has higher points than the other. Of course, some traits are better than the others, but if this is your first playthrough as a beginner, I highly recommend that you just forget about all these and just roleplay most of the conversations instead. And yes, you'll leave out some minor major bonuses to your character, but you'll have way more fun bantering with your characters in return. Now after all that information about the game and what to expect, I understand that it's pretty easy to be overwhelmed by this game. And I get it. With this in mind, it's best that you have a general idea on what sort of build you're gonna be aiming for, and to help with that, I'll link a character build calculator sheet in the description below. This greatly helped me in my playthroughs, so I hope it does the same thing to you. Now like I've been saying, this game is deep and complex, but don't worry cause after your first few hours, you'll start to get how this game works, and even have fun in the process. Just take your time, you may need to replay some parts of the game, but it's okay, it's normal, it's fine, and it's all worth it. Now for the tips and tricks section of the video 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 yeah video video i'm so weird what am i like this if this is your first playthrough i would highly advise that you make one of your main characters to be a pure mage this is by having an expertise in all five schools of magic at character creation make sure at least one of your main characters has the regeneration skill health does not regenerate after every match having a healing skill at the ready will be considerably helpful in your first hours of the game read the tutorials the second you jump into the game you'll be bombarded with pop-up windows explaining how the game works pay attention to those and don't skip them no matter how annoying they are and they are you can find a hidden bag near the starting area of the game this has a selection of items that may or may not help you depending on how you use it after a scripted combat segment there will be a closed cave entrance to the right side of the screen that is the tutorial cave going through it will help explain some more information on how to play the game along with some bonus exp Restarting from scratch is normal. Divinity Original Sin is one of those RPGs that will make character creation feel like a chore. A fun chore, but still a chore. And it is a given that you would mess up your first two main characters. Always save. Every instance before a fight, save. Before you steal, save. Before you decide on killing an innocent, save. Make sure you have a save file at the ready for almost every situation. Enemy strength is static. Every enemy in the game has a specific level and strength. This means that it's very possible for your party to advance a little too quickly and run into enemies that are way above your level meaning you're not supposed to be there yet have fun exploring this is a huge game and there are a lot of hidden secrets in every corner of the map discovering some of these secrets may reward you with gold experience and sometimes another quest pressing alt will reveal all the objects scattered in the world this will help you a ton when looting items now obviously this is for pc users sad to say i don't really know the right key for controllers so if you guys know please leave it in the comment section below i actually read the books manuals letters Again, books. These are all handy in advancing quests and getting useful and powerful items. You can teleport via waypoints littered all over the map. Pressing control will let you attack objects and or characters. Again, this is for PC users. Comment below if you know. Yeah. Combat, even in normal difficulty, is really difficult. Expect that you may lose some of your first fights. Is that a tip? I don't feel like that's a tip. But then again, just because you lost once doesn't mean you're gonna lose a second time. If you lose a fight, just reload a quick save and try again. Okay, now it's a tip. If a fight gets a little too hairy for you, you get an option to flee, which will teleport your character to the nearest safe location. Now, charm is one of the most helpful and dangerous spells in the witchcraft school. If one of your party members get charm, you can charm them again to uncharm them. Make use of summons. They will bring out more damage to the party and will act as cannon fodder for enemies. Crowd control is your best friend. You will win most fights via CC. This includes special arrows, grenades, scrolls, and flasks. Combine the elements. One of this game's main impact comes from elemental combinations that practice have at enemies. Be warned though as this sort of tactics works on your party members as well. Check their elemental resistances. Most of the time using a flame based attack on a fire based monster will just heal them instead of damaging them. The same goes with poison attacks on undead. In relation to the last step, the best way to deal damage to certain enemies is to use the opposite element that usually heals them. Resurrection scrolls are really expensive, always making an effort that no one dies in the group. Resistances are your best defense from elemental attacks. They change the amount of damage taken from their associated type. These are by percentage. This means that 50 fire resistance equates to only 50% of any fire damage is received. It's pretty easy to get a single resistance all the way to 100 towards the mid game and all resistances to 100 towards the end game. One of the most helpful skills in the game is rain which causes all fire based situations to weaken or downright disappear. Now blood also acts as water and can be electrified. Keep this in mind when bleeding enemies. Give your warriors the abilities thunder jump and the battering ram. This will give your melee fighters lots of maneuver of... Maneuverability. Movement is used for 
well, movement. The higher it is, the lower the cost to move around. It's most useful for melee characters such as a warrior or a rogue, not so much for ranged characters such as an archer or a mage. Initiative determines who gets to attack first in a combat situation. Obviously, the higher it is, the better the chances you'll be the one attacking first. If you can kill them before they even get the chance to hit you, it'll make each fight much less of a hassle. Like I said earlier, this is a manaless game. It uses an action point system to move, attack, and use skills. Everything you do in combat, moving, casting, attacking, cost to action points. Obviously, again, the more action points, the better. Build a well-balanced group. Make sure your heroes complement one another in terms of physical and magical damage along with defenses and resistances. The scientist talent is a must-have talent for a crafter. Thankfully, Jawan already has this talent and he's absolutely perfect to be the crafter of the party. Consider giving either your ranger or mage the glass cannon talent. That'll make him or her perform more actions, although at the expense of dying more easily. Now, my personal favorite lineup and for me the most effective lineup is a mage, a tank, a warrior or a rogue, and a ranger. To identify an item, use an identifying glass on the item you want to identify. You can repair items with a repair tool or you can ask a merchant to repair said item for you in exchange for gold. You may never know what you can find buried in the ground, so always bring a shovel. Crafting your own items is a great way in saving up gold while having the appropriate tools in combat. You can actually use your bags to store unique items you plan on not losing and or misplacing. You can combine 9 inch nails and boots to form non-slip boots, perfect for icy areas. While playing the game, you'll eventually encounter a merchant that'll sell you 2 books that give you 1 attribute point each and 2 other books that give you 3 ability points each. Keep this in mind while playing the game. There's also a different merchant that will allow you to trade 1 talent point for 1 ability point and 3 ability points for 1 attribute point. I highly advise not doing this as it's not worth it. At some point in the game, you'll be given a chance to respec your two main characters. Again, this is only possible for your two main characters. Your companions does not have this option, so be extra careful when building them. Do not go past 23 in any of the class attribute as you won't get any more bonuses past that point. The speed attribute must always be an odd number. Now, I don't exactly know how I'm gonna explain this and why it's good, so sadly, you'll just have to trust me on this one. At any time you need to, you can forget a skill to make room for a new one. All you need to do is go to the skill interface and click on the forget button beside the skill you want to remove. You can actually be immune to poison with the zombie talent. This talent can help you a ton and be a total pain in the ass at the same time. Blacksmithing level 5 ain't really that special and it's in fact required for very few occasions. I advise that you don't place too much points into it and achieve it by equipment instead. Choose your talents wisely. Besides being permanent, they change your characters completely and can never be undone except via respect. Respect. Don't feel bad in saving up a ability points to attain higher levels. In fact, you're supposed to do that and will help you far more in the future. Crafting and stealing is the best way to earn money besides looting every corpse you can find. Much like blacksmithing, crafting level 5 is rarely needed, but then again, it is required for you to craft useful items like a charming arrow, so keep that in mind. Stealing is fine as long as you're not discovered. In relation to that, become an art thief. Anything that is golden or painted can be sold for a lot more gold. Whenever stealing, use a different companion to talk to the people around what you're trying to steal. This will cause a distraction. Do not sell your rubies, tormented souls, scraps, and all other stuff automatically when you get them. Some of those are needed for enchanting and enhancing equipment. Something not everyone knows at the start of the game is that every NPC in the game is considered a merchant and can be sold and bought items from. And that's it! That's actually the first time I made a full-fledged video using Adobe Premiere as opposed to using Sony Vegas. It was really fun learning about the new software and its new tools. Sorry if my usual edits got changed a bit as I'm still learning the ins and outs of this editing software. I hope this video helped you a lot as it sure helped me in improving my content along with how I usually edit my videos. Like the video with the phone. Okay, I'm losing my voice and my sanity. Great! Like the video if you don't dislike it, and dislike if you don't like it. Share it with your friends, and if you do like it, consider subscribing to the Phantom Art for more. I'm Sis, and thank you for watching. Also, I just want to thank everyone for 100 subs. <laughs> I didn't expect I'll get 100 subs in just 6 months. Also, the, the first video I did had like, I think 26, 26k views. I did not expect that. Thank you so much, guys. I, I really am. Thank you.